Assalamu alaikum. Hey guys, oh, welcome back to Samawa. My name is Shukran Muhammad Salisu. For my returning subscribers, thank you so much for being here again. And if this is your first time on my channel, I'm pleased to have you. It will mean so much to me if you can be part of the family by clicking on the subscribe button and the notification bell beside it. That way you can get notified whenever a new video is being uploaded. So today I have a topic that I want to talk about. It's about, you know, well, we're far away from home and there are struggles that really come our way so i'll be talking about what struggles of living abroad that i faced or that no one is talking about because it's not just me but i discovered that almost everyone faced these struggles and it's like it's not really talked about out loud on social media or out there for people to know so if you're living abroad and you can relate to this please let me know in the comment section so that that i so that i can know that i'm not alone so the first thing I'll be using this paper that's why you'll be seeing me looking down a lot so first off it's like a disclaimer that these struggles are my own personal struggles that i've come with or like from those that i see from people around me have faced so it's mostly based on personal experiences or from what i see other people experiences experiencing so first i think it starts with um loneliness yeah the first one on the list is loneliness when you're far away from home and especially for me coming from a big family i would say yeah we're a family of 15 and there are some times of the year that you know we just have the one whole big family all together and it gets really you know when you are handpicked well, i wouldn't say handpicked when you alone live away like live far away from home you often feel lonely because i was used to being around my siblings you know, when I was with them, it didn't really mean a lot to me, like I didn't pay attention to it. But when I came to school, I realized that like being around them has made me forget that I was alone. But then when I was in school and then maybe I have some good news to share with them or I have something or I see something that makes me you know, remember home or stuff like that, I feel lonely. I remember there was a time I came back from school, like I went like it was a good news i was coming back from school to the hostel not that you are lonely or you're alone but sometimes there is there's a certain level of connection that you have with other people that you have with no other people and with my siblings oh my god the kind of connection we have you know siblings like if you have siblings you definitely can relate to this so when i was coming back from school to just like you know spread the good news and especially with the distance sometimes your network doesn't connect it doesn't allow you to have a proper conversation with them so i felt really lonely at that moment i remember when i first gave my tedx talk like i was thrilled i was you know i felt like i was up here because i was filled with excitement when i came back i wanted to just on my way back home i was with a friend and it felt really good i didn't feel really alone but when i was walking back to the hostel it felt like i wish they were here because if they were here we'd be going all together and then coming back all together and i can just like hear my dad's voice saying i'm proud of you or you've made me feel proud or like i know you could do this just those moments it just makes you feel alone when you're alone when you're out there and it just you know feels surreal that wow you just feel lonely and you just can't help it secondly is being all there by yourself like what do i mean by this is having to do almost everything yourself I come from a family like i'm one of the older siblings out of 15 yeah we are 15 so i'm the third child so you know i'm one of the older ones you get to send your younger siblings on errands stuff like that so when i came here like almost everything you have to do with yourself because unless you have a brother or someone that you came with that is you know the opposite gender and stuff like that there are stuff that you as a female you cannot do it especially at home like you know sometimes uh, your registration you don't want to frustrate yourself you just send your brother to help you do that or you want to get some cash you know stuff like this or you don't want to go to the market to get stuff i mean when i was home i was i was sent on like multiple errands i loved going on errands but then when i came here sometimes you just have to feel that kind of way that i don't want to do this i need someone to help me with it unless you have someone that you really vibe with or someone that you really get along with you have to do everything by yourself, especially with school process, idraat and stuff. It is so frustrating. I swear, like, it feels so frustrating. I have a friend that has, like, I think three brothers here. So when she doesn't want to go, she just sends one of them. And I was, every time she, she tells me that, 
I'll be like, girl, you're so damn lucky to have them here with you because I feel all by myself. I love being by myself and I love doing things for me. But sometimes you just can't help it. You need someone to help you with those stuff. In addition, you feel homesick, like you get homesick all the time. And I mean, who doesn't if you live away from, even if like you live in, the, my sister is married in Nigeria, but she's she gets homesick almost like every time she calls, she's like, I wish I could just do this. Like, I wish I could just get this from home. I wish, and if she comes, she rubs the house. Like, I'm not really exaggerating. Like she really rubs the house with a gun or stuff, but she takes stuff from home. I mean, you feel homesick when you see something that is, that you have it from home when you see something back home and you really need it you just have to get it for yourself because you don't want to be left out so when like most times that i get homesick is when i crave for homemade foods or some certain things like you know um things that you don't find here and sudan and nigeria people say that we have like this this culture shock obviously when you're abroad there's this culture shock that you go through and things are new for you here like for example Back home, it is the women that make uh, uh, this bean cake by the roadside, you know, street food. Mostly it's women and then the men make tea. But here it's the reverse. The women sell tea and the men cook food, like they sell food out. And it's like cultural shock for you. And it doesn't just taste like home, no matter where you get it. You find it hard for you to get stuff like back home. That is one of the biggest struggle you can get, especially if you're used to eating your local, your traditional foods. If you don't know where to find those stuff, oh my God. For us, I mean, like for us here in Sudan, stuff like red palm oil, stuff like um, Maggi, stuff like, you know, a lot of stuff. Just, I think I'll just pop some things up on the screen. They are really hard for you to get here. And so you just can't help it, but feel, I'm missing these things. You miss a lot of stuff back home. And then that homesickness just comes all over and clouds your head and it's like, Ah, oh, I wish I can just go back home for this. I wish I can just get this. Or sometimes you just want to see your families. Or when I watch something, especially when I wish watch a movie, a particular movie that we watch all together as a family. There's this particular Bollywood movie that we all watch together. It's like my siblings have memorized the scenes, the lines, what's going to happen next. You know, that movie that you don't get tired of watching as a family. Happy New Year. Oh my God, whenever I watch that movie, it's like, I'm like oh i wish i could just be back home like i can hear their voices what they were saying or i can just recall those moments it's just it's just not the same when you do it alone when you do stuff that you used to do back home and then you're here doing it alone it just doesn't feel the same it doesn't vibe the same you don't just connect to it that way that's it and then the next thing will be um friends you have a hard time keeping up with your friends because they're back home and you're all the way here when I first came here, well, all my friends, like I have a very small circle of friends and then all of them, they are back home. So and I have a hard time making friends. That's just one thing. It's either my introverted friends adopt me as a friend or it just happens naturally or we just grew up together. That's how I make friends. So now for me, like I'm all by myself. I have to make new friends like and thank God that I live in the school hostel where it's like you're just one big family again, like one small family there. You can just vibe with people over there in the hostel. I really thank God for being in the hostel because if not, if I were to live off campus, it would be really hard for me to make friends. But when you live in the hostel, there is a certain level of connection that you have with those people. It's like they are your own people. You stick together. You respect one another. You do stuff for each other. It's like you're at home. They make you feel less lonely. So that really helped me. But then still, I miss my friends back home. And having to connect with them, you know, keep in contact with them all together. There's this distance. Back then, there was no WhatsApp call. It was just the normal call when I first came here. It was also... A little bit hectic for us to be in touch and then eventually you you lose some friends along the way and then you make new friends but then they have to graduate and they have to leave that was the most like that that is still something that i'm really not getting used to because you make new friends here they're probably your seniors who came maybe three years before you came or you know two years before you came and then boom they're about to graduate and they are going to leave you alone here again it's just like you know the it's like a circle that you keep repeating, you keep running in circles and it's just difficult for you to be here. 
like uh yeah this currently this year most of my friends left just a few of us left here and it was so hard it took i was trying not to pay attention to it i was subconsciously trying not to keep dwelling my mind on that because if i did i would be so i would feel so low that it would be hard for me to carry on but then you know you remember that you're also leaving eventually someday and you're not going to be here forever that gives you a little bit of hope that okay i can go back but then still that issue of keeping in touch with your friends you know it's just not the same when you're when you're not together all alone but the best thing about it is the moment you vibe the moment you're back home you just click like i remember when i first came back from my first holiday yeah was it the, yeah it was the first holiday i have bits of maria like i've known her way since from our secondary school days so when i went back home i think it was the next day i visited her i went to her house and it's like we i never left we picked up right from where we start and that's one of like that's one of the things that i really like that feeling that you get the moment you click again the moment you start to vibe again oh my god i like i don't know how to describe it it makes you feel like wow you are still the same person obviously you're going to change but it makes you feel like it's like i haven't even left that's just it and yeah so moving to the next it's feeling like a stranger when you go home my siblings are going to call me out for this honestly i have i have a hard time adjusting to change before i could adjust to being in sudan it took me a while so when i got kind of a little bit comfortable when i go back home it's like i'm living in a different life here i'm only responsible for myself i make food for myself only i i know what to do when i wake up just go to, like you know i know my own routine it's just made for me but when you're back home you have to adjust other people into your own routine you have to cook for like 10 people you have like you just have to change so that adjustment made me feel like a stranger i i don't think i've ever told anyone this so if you're watching this and you know how much i love my sleep comment down below on a scale of one to ten how much do i love my sleep so when i went back home you know if you go back home you just have to go back to that default setting i didn't i didn't reset myself i went back home my mom would like wake me up early in the morning oh from fudge you're not going back to sleep that i felt like oh my god i can't wait to go back to school because i want to sleep in the morning i want to sleep in until i just feel like waking up but then you cannot do that you have other people who you're responsible for you're not just responsible for yourself then another thing that really gets to me is missing out on all the fun activities back home i think almost all my friends now i have not attended any of my friends marriage like all my friends that got that got married i didn't attend i was every everyone it's either when i when i'm back home for holiday it's not marriage season or the marriage has been postponed the wedding you know stuff like that i was just not included so i felt like i was excluded out of every fun thing and it's not just maybe you know graduation back home my siblings graduation or like their quran completion walima stuff like that i want to be a part of it and one thing with me is if i know something is going on back home i will be calling you every minute of that day i want to be included but then they are too busy to have your time and it frustrates the life out of me i remember when one of my friends was getting married i called maria i was like i'll be calling you on video call if you don't pick my call we, we are going to have a problem and she's like yeah don't worry i'll take you along and she was kind enough to really take me along she sent me photos she sent me videos you obviously see them but you want to be part of that moment there was one another moment that i really felt like you know out like i wouldn't say an outcast that i really felt like i am really missing home that i'm really missing out on stuff was when my cousin got married oh my that was it was like the last string that broke me no you know like i really feel bad when i'm missing out but it's like ah I'm used to this like you know you eventually it will eventually pass it's just a moment it will eventually pass but then when my cousin got married i think it was last year december november december something like that i saw everyone was there and <laughs> well what really gave me like what really calmed me down was that my mom also missed the wedding <laughs> like <laughs> 
to go home then because we were on holiday i wanted to go back home she said no i shouldn't i should um stay in school she was like you know when you come back home and you're going back it's going to be a lot of israel for us you're going to be like and i know you how you are you will be saying you you are bored you want to do a lot of stuff and it's not just much time why don't you just just be patient and stay when you have a longer holiday you can come back home i was like i really like deep down inside i knew that something deep down in me i knew that i felt like i was going to miss something big i just told her okay khalas, inshallah khair. maybe it's not good for like it's not khair for me to come back home perhaps something might happen and then so i stayed in school oh she traveled out again she traveled out herself and she missed the wedding she came back i think two days after the wedding i called her and i was like i don't mean to be this bitter but i was laughing everyone like most of my, my friends here they're like rooks you you are really you are really bitter i'm like no i'm not bitter it's like i have something that we can connect and you can feel how i feel when i miss stuff when i'm here and stuff is happening back home she was like hmm. so this is how you feel this is how it feels to miss out i was like hmm. now you can feel my pain we laughed it out but it, i wasn't really being bitter but we laughed it out because we, and we sympathize with one another so that's just the front part of it but really when st when events are happening back home and you're here my sudan people comment down below how many events have you missed if you're lucky to you know attend any event when you go home for holiday i'm happy for you but for me i don't think i've ever attended any event back home ever since i came like a period of how many years going to seven years now yeah i clocked six years last august so that's just it that i know that i have talked about events but then one of the most important parts one of the most important things that we miss out on is aid periods last the previous aid i think it yeah aid and fitter that passed i have never felt homesick like that period because school wasn't going on we were all done with our we were frustrated in ramadan to finish we were rushed to finish our exams by the school and then we finished and there was like two to three weeks holiday i love holidays but then this this time around it's like i just want to i just i don't want to rest because like resting just makes you feel you don't have anything doing and it gets frustrating every day when you just wake up sleep eat that's it and even creating other um routine for yourself or creating involving other programs it it's just three weeks it's sudan like it's so hectic so i felt really i wasn't the one almost everyone that celebrated it or fitter unless you have your friends you go out and stuff like that it was really hard for us it was a toil on us like we went to the masjid we came back we took like we didn't even take photos like we used to because aid here in sudan is just for you to go to the eat ground pray you know um greet one another take pictures with people you know then go back home and sleep if no cook and then go back eat all together and then go back home and one thing that really made it feel so different this year was because as i said most of my friends that we were together they've gone back home so it was so hard for us to like celebrate it without them and i almost cried i couldn't cry i wanted to cry in my room i remember like i was seated and i couldn't reach anyone back home as well i was so i don't i can't honestly like when i i don't I pray to God that I never experienced that again. I have never felt lonely ever in my life like that period. Because it's like you're just there in your loop room, just seated like that. Like I've never celebrated Eid without anyone around me. Not that there weren't people, but we are all not in the spirit like the spirit of Eid was not in us. You know that kind of thing. Gosh. Another thing is language barrier language barrier it's a struggle for me honestly because you know like alhamdulillah for us people from nigeria we kind of have this background of arabic language but when you come here it's a different struggle the arabic that we speak back home is fusha the standard arabic that's the one you have the one they speak here is the darjia that's the local dialect they change it like it's like learning english and then coming to nigeria and then you just find that everybody speaks pidgin english it's going to be really hard you were learn you were taught how are you doing at school but then when you walk out in them streets they tell you how oh, nadi like 
dig it, that's just the harder part of it. And that does not stop in the streets. It comes into the classroom. Even if you come, especially in my school, we have this one year program of Arabic. If you, if you don't have an Arabic background, they have to enroll you in that one year, one year diploma in Arabic. So I was lucky enough because I, I was lucky enough not to go through that. I thought the little Fusha that I knew from, from Islamia can help me. I aced my interview. I started going to class. Oh my God. The teachers also speak Darijia in school. Like that's just it. You have no one to help you with that. You're, you only get lucky if your teacher, if, if, if the lecturer can speak English and my faculty, everything is in Arabic and it was really hard for us to adjust. It's still hard because once you have that background in a different language and you're still trying to, every course you have to learn vocabularies for every course because you can have this vocabulary for bacteriology, you can have this for fungi, you can have this for, because I study microbiology, so I'm going to use that as an example. Or you can have this uh, vocabulary for for chemistry, and then you have different vocabularies for physics, you have different vocabularies for different courses, and each and every course you have to learn new vocabularies, you have to get yourself acquainted with them. Hmm. This one, I'm frustrated about this, the having to deal with when are you coming back? God, I hate that question. Like, I hate that question with passion because we don't know when we're coming back. I didn't know when I was coming to Sudan, obviously, but then one thing about having to study is you don't know when you're going back home, even if you're done with your studies, please. I, during my first year holiday, when I went back home, people were like, so you're done. It was just a year that I was gone. For goodness sake, people, have you forgotten me? Or is it, is it that a year is too, is too long for you to feel like it's been ages? Honestly, like this one, it gets on every nerve living in my body because like this one, I have to use Hausa. Nothing is certain, honestly, in this place because Sudan is just... You can't be certain about everything, anything happening here because if it's not, if you're not dealing with uh, protesters, mudaharat, you're dealing with recession. If you're not dealing with recession, you're dealing with one thing or the other. The country is not stable. So that brings about, you know, obstacles in our studies. There was a time, I think during three years back, 2018, that was the beginning of the obstacles, like the, I wouldn't call it strike, but schools were being closed by the government. So during that period, it was when we started, uh, I have to use Hausa in this place. When the English comes into my mind when I'm editing, I'll write it down, I will type it on the screen for you guys to see because this one, I really want to get it out. Look at in 2018, Akafari Samu problem with the government in Sudan and stuff like that, Akadingari for schools. So they're gonna Akadingari say the Karatumu. I look at in Inaga as in Minyoko, yeah, it was Ramadan. Mungu Sanfari exams, Kawai Akara for school. I know you can relate to this because what you're going through now with Asu, Akara for school, Bamasani, Basemain, Salah, like when there's a good second second, she naked Jama, yaki extended period in Karatumu, could you gonna come on with Kamambama Musumadao? Trust me, Mufuko was some Madao Gida Saboda me. It's not even like don't ever get a good average, and it's never nothing feels like home here. So, gosh, like nothing feels like home here. Don't no matter what. But people will just be frustrating your life. The people, some people even have guts to tell you that, ah, like you guys are lucky to even live in it. I'm like, you don't know what you're saying. Honestly, I know life is hard, but we are going through uh prob we we have problems also in nigeria but sometimes when you're with, when you're with your own people and you're going through it it is less pro it feels less the children doesn't want to come and you're going through something honestly it's like it it it, it it's a little bit easy for you it eases up for you than going through it alone right and one thing about people, like one thing that really frustrates me is I go back home for holiday. People will be pressuring my life. People will be disturbing my life when I come back home. I'll go back from home for holiday. Cast, 
Like, how in Jegida in the Hutuna, I will not see those people. They will not come and do it. Oh, yo, yo. When you are leaving, they will not come and say, okay, I like here, Hanya. I like under the Sadwa. No, nobody will do that to you. They will just be like, until you go, ah, how can you tell my over? And yeah, Allah, Saki, Allah, baby. But when you Allah, baby, but if you know you're asking me, you know yourselves. Please stop asking us those questions. So this is the end of my video. If you loved and enjoyed it, I know I started off on uh, like I started off study somehow like this, but then ended up all over the place because like I have my feelings in this what I've written. It's not as I planned it. It is not as I planned the video to be in my head. But then hey, we plan and Allah plans and His plans and He is the best of planners and His plans always are the best. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give me a like, a thumbs up. And don't forget to comment down below on where, whatever part of the video that you like best. And don't forget to share it with your family and friends. If you stay abroad and you relate to any of this, please let me know in the comment section. If you're back home and you don't know any of these things, now you know. And yeah, I think that's the end of the video. I forgot my ending. Ma'asalaamu. Meet you guys in my next video. Bye.